Hi, my name is Sam Young. I'm the veterinarian here at the Greensboro Science Center. And today we're taking a look at our giant Pacific octopus. We're doing a full physical exam, ultrasound, and collecting some samples. Hi, my name is Elizabeth. I'm an aquarist here at the Greensboro Science Center. That means I help take care of all of our aquatic animals. So GPOs are incredibly intelligent animals and she knew something was up. She didn't know what was going on. So we actually ended up having to put a diver in the tank to help her come up to the surface. So after Sarah was able to get her up to the surface, we scooped her in a laundry basket and then quickly transferred that laundry basket there. I wanna say there was like three people handed down and handed out. So she was out of the water for less than about 10 seconds. Once the octopus is safely in the tank, uh, we went ahead and add our anesthetic, which in this case is pure grain alcohol, um, and we happen to use Everclear just due to its availability. Um, octopuses have different physiology and don't respond to our normal uh, fish anesthetic drugs, the MS-222 you may have seen us use in the past. So you're going to see me putting two probes in our tank. One is pH and the other is dissolved oxygen. We want to make sure throughout the exam that those parameters do not fall out of her comfort zone. So after about 10 minutes uh, for the uh, anesthetic to take effect, we went ahead and started collecting some diagnostic samples, uh, the first of which was a hemolymph sample. So this is collected from uh, a central vessel within one of the arms. You could pick any arm, doesn't matter. Um, we'll take a look at this uh, smeared out on a slide and we can assess uh, the different cell populations that are there. Additionally, we got a gill biopsy. To do so, um, we exteriorized the gill filaments and then with a really tiny, sharp pair of scissors, I just remove a tiny fragment um, from the gill and we can look at that under the microscope. In this case, we were able to see some uh, relatively common gill parasites we see on octopuses, uh, Ichthyobodo. We did, we had to move the container of water and it is, it was a 55 gallon container of water, which is a lot of water. It takes a lot of people to move. We needed to move it closer so that Dr. Sam didn't have to stretch his instruments too far. After we got the water moved, uh, we went ahead and did a full body ultrasound. Um, this is uh, mostly to assess all the organ health and, and get a good look at, at all of his or her insides. Um, the other reasoning was to help us determine the sex of this individual. Typically we look at the third arm from the right. There's a, a structure called the hectocotylus that uh, only males have. Um, when this individual came to us, that bit of the arm was amputated. Um, so we were looking for the presence of sperm packets in a male's uh, situation or potentially eggs if it were a female. Unfortunately, neither were present. Um, this makes me more suspicious that it's probably a male, um, but we still don't know for sure. So to get a weight on this individual, um, we place her in a porous basket, attach that to a hanging scale, uh, and then in this instance, um, I believe she weighed 6.8 pounds, um, which is up from the original arrival weight. Um, so that means she is uh, eating and processing uh, those calories and putting on weight. So a good sign of health. It, it's really an amazing experience to get to work with an octopus. Um, they are so unique and so different from every other species we have here. Um, every time we get a chance to get our hands on one, it's a learning experience. Um, everything from their physiology to anatomy to the uh, the way we collect samples and the way we treat for conditions, um, there's so many parameters, but just everything is so new and unique um, that it's, it's really an interesting uh, and challenging time. I would say the favorite part of my job is when we have guests that get excited about my animals, so then I can talk very excitedly to them and give them cool facts. And I just, I love seeing little kids get excited about my animals. That always makes me very happy and just leaves me with a smile.